closely to resemble a picture that's actually in this room. Uh, it has a black background and a basically an identical frame, except the difference is they used a 45 degree edge where we went with more of a farmhouse edge. Um, but again, this the reason we did the cabinet instead of the shelf, we have three uh, little kids, two five-year-olds and a six-year-old, and they, I mean, they're kids. They get into everything, they pull on things, they hang on things. Uh, we did not want to risk uh, them pulling on the tonal equipment, possibly pulling the shelf off the wall. This is what we built. Uh, it is secured with a RFID uh, lock. So you just hold this to the lock, pops open. After it stops beeping, you can then just push it closed again and it's secure. This is the piece that we use for our inspiration. It's just, again, something simple we got from Hobby Lobby. Um, kind of like the quote for, especially in a gym area, I thought it was kind of appropriate. Um, wanted to match the wood on the outside of it, black background, looks very much like a chalkboard. It's not, it's just black paint, but ours, ours is chalkboard. Um, the difference is, again, their edging uh, is 45 degrees. We did not do that. Again, I'll explain why. Um, but yeah, this, this is our inspiration for our tonal cabinet. So I'm gonna explain to you guys how we mounted this to the wall. Uh, your wall's probably gonna be a little bit different because we actually have uh, this faux brick treatment that we did to our wall. This is just a faux brick paneling that we got from Lowe's um, and then we, we painted it white. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because I know some of you have mentioned that your tonals cannot get installed on brick walls. Um, we didn't have an issue with that because this is, again, it's a paneling. It's uh, it's almost made like a, a paper or a, like drywall, I guess. It's 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 not thick at all. It's not hard material. It's very easy to drill through. Uh, it only adds maybe a quarter inch to a half inch thickness to your to your wall. Um, but again, this is how we mounted when we could not get into studs. Um, we have three of these on the left side of this cabinet here. So you'll see this screw, this screw, and this one. Um, actually, they're bolts. So they are bolts that are in this anchor, and these are these heavy-duty uh, quarter-inch toggle bolts. Uh, got these from Lowe's. They hold up to 265 pounds in half-inch drywall. Again, our wall is slightly thicker because we have the paneling, so hopefully it's going to hold a lot more. On the right side here, you're going to see that we actually have, these are cabinet mounting screws. Um, we were able to get three of these into the stud itself. So just those alone would probably hold this sufficiently to the wall, especially with all the equipment in it. Um, but we went a little above and beyond, I think, and put the extra mounting screws in. These are the hinges that we use. We actually used three of these on ours. Um, my husband and I are not in agreement on how much this door weighs. We did not weigh it. Um, there's recommendations on how much weight you should put or how much weight per hinge you should use. Um, we went with three. I think we probably could have gotten away with two, but uh, we always err on the side of over engineering or safety, I guess. So we went with three. Um, these are just a Euro frameless hinge. Again, Lowe's, I think, um, these are the soft clothes ones, so I think we paid a little bit more for these. I think they were $10 a piece. Uh, we'll put a link down below. One of our biggest doubts with this project was the hinges. Uh, we've never done cabinetry or worked with hinges before, so we weren't really comfortable with it. Um, so we were very hesitant. We had built both of the pieces, the door itself, and then this uh, back piece. But one of the other options you could do with this, and it would make this a lot easier, is to actually not go with the door and not use hinges. Um, and what I mean by that is if you look at the actual backboard and the frame itself, you could just use that for your equipment and it would it obviously would be open um, so if you have kids obviously be mindful of that or if you have somebody you don't want messing with your equipment but it still is going to look really good and really organized because you've got everything is hung and it's it's basically tucked behind this frame um, that you're building one of the reasons we were hesitant to go with the hinges is because we noticed once we actually drilled the holes for the hinges they were going into the frame. Um, so they're half in the frame, half in the backboard of the door, um, and we weren't really sure how that was gonna hold up, if that was gonna be secure. Obviously, we've got it all on here now, and we haven't had any issues, haven't heard any cracking or anything like that, so we're pretty happy with it. We don't think we're gonna have issues in the future, but that is part of this build because 
of how we did the framing. So we did like a dry fit, if you will. Um, what we did was lay out all of our equipment and then we had to figure out exactly how thick the side frame of the backboard had to be in order to not hit the um, rope when the door closed. So pretend this is the door, it would sit on this side frame and it's gonna close just like this. Ours is, Ours is gonna be pretty tight to the rope. Um, that's just how we made it. Obviously you can make it thicker, but again, I didn't want the sides to protrude too far off the wall. I wanted it to basically match the tonal, um, which I think is like right around five and a half inches. So this doesn't stick out any further than the tonal itself. Um, the other thing is if you're not going to do the door, um, you don't have to worry about how thick to make the frame on the side. Okay, so if you're going to do the door, um, Another option that you would have is you don't have to have the second frame. And what I mean by that is we have um, the frame that protrudes from the outside of the door. You don't have to do that. You could just do a flat piece, basically just build the backboard, build the frame, and then do, um, you know, add some hinges and then a big flat piece that goes over and just call it a day. Um, we wanted it to have the frame just because again, um, we didn't want it to necessarily look like a cabinet, but more like a picture. Um, so that's why we added the frame. So what we did was, this is, this is the exact wood we used, it's just poplar. Um, I'll go over the dimensions in a little bit. But basically we had, uh, I think it's six inches long, or six inches wide. And what we did was we took that piece and we ripped it. Uh, I think it's an inch and a half. So we ripped it an inch and a half, which gave us our frame for the backboard and then it gave us the frame for the actual door. So this was one long piece of wood that we used. We ripped it down and we used it for the framing for the entire piece. This is the wood that we initially started using um, when we built our first cabinet. We actually had to totally scrap that one and I'll show you why here in just a second. But this wood we thought was going to be the better wood to go with instead of just going with like a sheet of plywood. Um, and we thought that just because again, uh, it's prepackaged, we just assumed that it was going to be a more perfect wood, less no bows, no uh, like the edges that would be cut true to size. Um, that was not the case. And I'm going to show you here, these two black pieces are the original cabinet that we started to build. And then we noticed once we stacked them on top of each other, they were so warped and they were so, um, they, they were just not flush. So we could not use these pieces on our first cabinet or on the cabinet period. Uh, and we had to completely start over. I mean, these are stacked on top of each other. Um, and you can see if I push down on one side, um, I mean, there's a huge gap here. The pieces that we ended up going with were cut from a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch maple plywood. Um, we went with that because when we looked at it, we realized how extremely flat it was. Um, you can actually see this is, this is the remnant. This is actually, oh, this is a remnant too, but this is actually cut to the dimensions that we needed in case we need, needed a, a spare piece. But this piece you can see on here, I mean, this is completely flat to the sheet that it's underneath. There's no wobbling, there's no warping, it's completely flat. It was the thickness that we needed, so we went with this. This whole sheet was, I think, $44 at Lowe's. Those other two, I think, were, they cost more than that together. So our bag, don't make that mistake, don't use those, don't take the shortcut. Lowe's will cut these for you if they don't fit in your car or if you don't have a table saw. Ask Lowe's, Lowe's will actually cut these down for you. We had them do ours, um, and they just ripped the board. Uh, it was three rips and then we were good. This is the wood that we use for our framing. This is poplar. Um, we bought it in six foot lengths. And this is, um, it, it says on the, when you go to buy it, it says it's six inches, but it's not, it's actually five and a half. Again, that's perfect because that's what the tonal protrudes off the wall and we did not want our cabinet to be uh, bigger or to stick out further than the tonal. So this is your frame. Um, what we did was we ripped it all the way down. So as you can see, just imagine that this is basically it. It was one long piece, six foot. We ripped it. Um, this is an inch and a half, left us with a four inch frame for our bottom. And then this four inch frame, we did this all around. Now again, these are gonna be 45, uh, 45 degree cuts for this frame. We did not go with that on our cabinet because 
this just got too difficult. Um, we totally scrapped. This is this is all our scrap pile, basically. We scrapped it because the 45 just it just wasn't lining up the way we had wanted. Um, so we went with just a straight piece, so you don't have to do this. We use pocket holes. Um, we ended up buying it was $100 for the pocket hole jig. They have cheaper ones. We went with that one just because we actually have been doing a lot of woodworking lately, and we thought that was a decent investment to go with the nicer set. Um, so again, that's just preference. Um, We've done several projects though where you just go just pre-drill and then screw in through the side and what you would do is just make sure you countersink so drill a little bit further in with those screws and then cover that up with some wood filler and then stain over it. Uh, we'll show you a table that we've made and a bench that we made that way. Um, it's very hard to actually even see the screws. You can but I think it's only because we know that they're there but we'll, we'll show this to you guys. Um, so that is basically the frame. Um, again, if you want to stop here, great. You don't have to build the door frame, but it's the exact same thing for the door. Um, so your pieces are just going to be thinner pieces. Those, again, that was for the, um, that's the thicker frame. That is the pieces that um, your equipment hang off of. Those have to be thicker, again, for the mounts. This is a thinner frame. This is for the door. If you don't want to do the door, you do not have to do the door. Uh, again, just preference. But this is it's basically the exact same as that. You just put it together, screw your holes in, and your door is basically, this is your door panel. You're done. Um, and then it's basically cutting the holes for the hinges. Again, um, we ended up buying a jig, a Craig jig for that, because we were not comfortable with drilling a hole and making sure we didn't go through the door because we had spent so much time on this. We did not want to mess it up again um, because this, it was the second cabinet we built. So we went with the Craig jig, made it very, very easy to do. Um, again, putting the hinges on, that was kind of a pain trying to figure that out and get it all lined up. But that's just any door. If you've ever put cabinets together, you know that getting everything aligned just, that takes time. Um, but that's basically it. Like it's just cutting down the wood and then screwing everything into the side. You'll see on ours, um, when we open the door, you will see some grooves into the side of our door when it's open. Um, those are pocket holes. And we actually, we did buy the dowels to stick into the pocket holes, but we ended up not doing that just because of time's sake and also because it was the inside of the door, we didn't really care too much what that looked like. Um, I did actually paint inside those holes just because it was raw wood on a black surface, and so it was very, very obvious um, that they were there until I painted them black, and then it's, it all kind of blended in. One of the other things that you are going to want to pay attention to, if you are doing the door piece, um, so again, this is, just pretend this is your door. If you're doing the door piece, you need to make sure whichever way your door is going to open and whichever side is your hinge side, when you're drilling in your framework, you need to make sure you don't just you know, do a screw every two inches and then you won't have room for your hinge. Make sure you're leaving room for your hinge. We did our pocket holes. I did, I think, two here, two here. Uh, I just spaced it out so that I knew that my hinge, uh, I knew exactly where my three hinges would be. So that's another thing to consider when you're drilling in. And even in pocket holes, you're gonna wanna make sure you're leaving room for your hinges.